broadcast, we've got an exclusive interview with Gary Franchi about some exciting Ron Paul poll results out of Iowa, which show the Texas congressman is not only ahead of Barack Obama, but is also beating his Republican challengers. And those results will not be published until tomorrow, but we've got the exclusive on what the figures are showing right now with Gary Franchi speaking here with Aaron Dykes. Thank you, Paul. And now for a detailed look at what that poll shows and what it means, we turn now to Gary Franchi, chairman of RevolutionPack.com. Uh, we know the mainstream media has used tactics all throughout their black book to keep Ron Paul's name out of the headlines, and yet here he is in this poll, uh, a significant contender in Iowa, if not the outright leader. Gary Franchi, please tell us more about what this poll means. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know, we understand uh, what's happening in the country today, so we wanted to get a snapshot of Iowa. We wanted to get a true, a true figure, a true scientific figure uh, of what the presidential race looks like, and the results are in. And we did, we we did a survey of 29, about 2,900 uh, Iowa residents. Uh, we commissioned the survey through an independent company called Tele Research Corporation, a highly reputable uh, research uh, polling service. And out of those 2,900 uh, people polled, we got 846 likely Republican caucus goers. Okay, now these are the people that are going to go and attend and cast their vote for their selected candidate. Now, as you know, last week, the Bloomberg poll was the big talk of the town, and it showed a, a dead heat among the candidates who are running, uh, you know, Paul and Romney and Kane and these guys here. So uh, what we decided to do was we wanted to find out who was going to cross over from the independent and Democratic side and go and vote. We want to see how much influence the candidates had. And what we discovered was the number one candidate, the candidate that is taking uh, the, the top, he, I mean, this poll shows that the only candidate that has a crossover is Ron Paul. And he leads by a four point margin over Herman Cain. Now, the poll actually had a three point margin of error. That three point margin of error um, shows that we, because, because Ron is four points over, that he is actually in the lead. Now, the the breakdown is actually 678 registered Republican caucus attendees and 168 disaffected Democrats and independents. So what this shows is definitively Ron Paul is in first place for Iowa. Right, for those who don't understand, the margin of error is uh, a standard with these scientific polls. But if you're above that margin of error, that's where you show that you're not in a statistical dead heat, uh, that things are really in a clear trend, especially when you bring in the key, the independence, which is also very important in the mainstream races, obviously. Oh, without question, because, see, most people give Obama the race uh, in 08 because of the independent vote. Um, what we're starting to see now with this poll is that people are saying that Ron Paul is going to pull in the Democrats, he's going to pull in the independents. He has the crossover appeal. None of the other candidates have that ability, and this poll definitively shows that. And even when you just talk about the niche Republican group, uh, true diehard Republicans, he's still at a statistical dead heat with Cain and Newt Gingrich, right? That's correct, yes. There's, it, it's still, with just the, the baseline Republican vote, there is still a statistical dead heat. Um, but when you, once you incorporate Democrats and independents, it puts Ron Paul over the top. So what this poll, the Republicans, the leading Republicans, okay, if you want to play the two-party race and you want, you know, we all know, we all know the game. But uh, the, it is a game. It's actually happening. And if the Republicans really have a desire to win, if they want to win this race, then they need to get behind Ron Paul because he's the only one that could actually take it from Obama because he can pull in those Democrats and Republicans away from Obama. And people are tired of all the lies. I think they see through both sides of the spectrum in many cases. And 
and Obama's so full of it, as are the others. Now, the other important thing that other recent polls have shown is that while there may be a close matchup with people like Kane and Gingrich, they have kind of a fluctuating support. Most of the people who identify they're going to vote for those candidates are not entrenched, whereas a very significant portion of Ron Paul supporters say they have decided for sure who their candidate is, they're dedicated to him, they're showing up no matter what to vote for Ron Paul. The other ones, they're going to see which way the wind blows, perhaps. Well, the message of liberty is infectious, and it spreads. It does. It spreads like a virus. Once you get once you get bit by the bug of freedom, and you understand Ron Paul's message, it's really hard to turn away from it because your eyes are open to the reality of what's happening. So, you almost feel guilty to turn away from it. It's like it's like sort of like pretending that the that um, you know you didn't watch a car crash or something like that. So. People, once they tur get turned on to Ron Paul, they stay turned on to Ron Paul, and then they continue to spread the message. The other candidates don't have that same infectious groove that Ron Paul does. Uh, one thing that, that we did discover, and I, I really wanted to put this question in the poll, uh, was uh, this is the specific question. We said, next, as a voter, do you have one issue that is a primary factor in deciding for whom you will vote? And... Um, Economy, jobs, government debt, and bailouts came in at 45%. That is the leading issue in the country today, economy, jobs, government debt, and bailouts. Now, the, the, the following question, now another one, another clinching question that really shows what is happening in the country and where the temperature of freedom is. We asked, which of the following do you feel pose the greatest threat to your long-term peace and national security? We select one of the following. Now we asked them about China, revitalized Russia, North Korea, Iran, and interventionist foreign policy. Interventionist foreign policy came in at 27%. 27%. It came in at second place. So out of out of all the people, okay, that's not just Republican, likely Republican caucus goers. That's of the larger sample size of 2,900. Out of 2,900 people, 27% said that an interventionist foreign policy is the greatest threat to national security. That vindicates and shows that Ron Paul's message of a non-interventionist foreign policy is gaining steam. Right, and he's obviously been the most credible person on economic issues as well, and obviously that looms very large. And Obama and the other establishment GOP people have been totally discredited when it comes to beating the war drums. Now, I want to get into the activism itself because your PAC has been putting commercials out there, doing other great work, and this is a great idea. We did this at InfoWars back in the 08 cycle. Maybe we'll get on it here in 2012 as well. Uh, people can commission polls. They can do other things to bring attention to this candidate or any issue when the mainstream media is obviously dedicated towards keeping his name out of the papers and so forth. The polls themselves are scientific, and you could simply hire out the crews who know how to do this. But if they don't put Ron Paul's name in the question, he's not going to show up in the statistics. Yet here he is leading the pack by four points. Newt Gingrich and Herman Cain at 20 one and 20 percent respectively the other candidates far further down Mitt Romney only at 15 percent here in this poll with what five weeks to go till Iowa January 3rd yeah and you know you want to talk about the activism the thing about the revolution pack as I, as I spoke to you guys earlier on the show today is that uh, we have a significant advantage that a traditional presidential campaign has. Uh, as you know, presidential campaigns do have a campaign donation limit. We do not. And people can support us at revolutionpack.com. We can, we actually, uh, we have in the works the possibility of doing another poll in the future. Uh, but our yeah. big dream, this is the big dream where we need people to step up to the plate. We have revolutionary internet marketing technology, stuff that has never been seen before that can be deployed, that can change the entire game. Not just internet marketing or internet advertising technology, but we also have the ability to blanket the states of Iowa with television ads, uh, billboards, uh, bus stops. I mean, everywhere you look, if you give us the contribution, we can make it happen. We can put Ron Paul's name everywhere, and there will be no way that he can be denied. We're gonna keep him, we're gonna keep Ron Paul in the frontal lobe 
of the people in Iowa, of the people of New Hampshire, and we need your support to do that at revolutionpack.com. Well, there's no doubt that the message is getting out there, but I agree, people don't need to stop. Even if he doesn't get the nomination, he can run in it as an independent, or even if he doesn't, we still need to get the message of liberty out there, because what he really represents are those important issues. Uh, I think just for reference, they wanted to show the Zogby poll that InfoWars Commission in 2008. That was an interesting one. It was at a time when Ron Paul really didn't have the kind of recognition name-wise that he now has. Now almost everyone knows who Ron Paul is. At the time, we did a blind bio, as they call it, with, you see, candidate A is a 10-term congressman from a large southern state, goes on to describe them. And Ron Paul did very well in that when it wasn't a name game. Uh, at the same time, we had to rewrite questions like Mitt Romney's blind bio because they were openly uh, putting heroics in there and loaded words and uh, buzz terms that cause people to trend towards the, the manufactured candidates. It's just an interesting study on polling in general. Uh, your final yeah. comments, Franchi. Aaron, what I, what I wanted to point out, I'm glad you, you discussed the buzzwords in polls. What we did in this poll is we made it totally dry, totally generic, no buzzwords. Uh, it's just like, you know, who's your favorable, who's your unfavorable, who's your first choice, who's your second choice, and we left it at that. It's straight statistics, it's straight science, and, it's, and it shows that Ron Paul is the leading candidate in Iowa, and he has the... He has the possibility to take the whole state, and we need your support at Revolution Pack to keep the momentum, to keep the pressure on RevolutionPack.com. Please support us. Thanks, Gary. And, of course, Iowa has always historically been the place to watch for primary elections. Uh, at the same time, they've moved up so many of the other primaries, making them earlier and earlier. It'll be interesting to watch if that affects the influence of an outside candidate like Ron Paul. Uh, traditionally, it would reinforce the support for a big-time candidate, a Romney or, or Kane, who has the mainstream backing. Uh, so we'll see what happens when they move up these primaries. But that's something to look at in another segment at another time. For now, uh, this is Aaron Dykes reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Back to you, Paul Watson. Thanks, Aaron. Now, these poll numbers are obviously really exciting for Ron Paul supporters because, as we know, Iowa is the key first battleground state in the whole nomination process. And the results actually tally with an article that I wrote a few days ago, which concerned the Bloomberg News poll, which gave a similar outcome. And not only is Ron Paul stronger in the numbers with this margin of error of 3%, he still overrides that. But his support is more solidified than a, any other candidate, candidate in that state. Uh, Ron Paul supporters are the least likely to change their minds, whereas the likes of Kane and Gingrich supporters are. So this all bodes well for Ron Paul being able to build momentum in this key early battleground state, and it will force the establishment media to change tactics. They will be forced to take Ron Paul seriously and give his, the, give his campaign the kind of coverage it deserves. They won't be able to limit Ron Paul to 89 seconds out of a 90-minute debate, as CBS News did last Saturday. So it's a very exciting development, and we've got that exclusive story right now on Infowars.com with more to come tomorrow. Now, in a related story, Ron Paul gets occupied. A Ron Paul town hall event yesterday was disrupted by Occupy Wall Street protesters who interrupted his speech to proclaim that they were the 99% while complaining about the criminals on Wall Street. Do you feel better? <laughs> Now, let me, let, me, let me address that for a minute, because if you listen carefully, I'm very much involved with the 99. I've been condemning that 1% because they've been ripping us off for the So we need, we, need, we need to sort that out. But the people on Wall Street got the bailouts, and you guys got stuck with the bills, and I think that's where the problem is.
As Steve Watson writes on Infowars, it's not exactly clear whether the Occupy sympathizers were taking issue with Ron Paul's campaign or simply using the event to get publicity. Some did appear to be shouting, quote, Obama during the exchange. So why are people protesting Wall Street by disrupting the event of a presidential candidate who takes virtually no money from Wall Street? while half of them, according to the polls, plan to actually vote for Barack Obama, the ultimate Wall Street puppet. I mean, who is steering these people? We reported yesterday how the Occupy Wall Street official website had banned all material from Alex Jones and Infowars, glibly claiming that they agree with free speech unless it represents, quote, fascism. So apparently we're all fascists now. I didn't get the memo on that one. But now it appears that Occupy Wall Street protesters are targeting Ron Paul. They're not disrupting Newt Gingrich, who told OWS protesters to go take a bath and get a job. They're not interrupting Mr. Wall Street Mitt Romney. They're disrupting Ron Paul, the biggest critic of Wall Street, currently running a presidential campaign. So what's wrong with this picture? It's another blatant attempt by the likes of MoveOn.org and other establishment leftist Obama campaign fronts to co-opt the Occupy movement and to ensure that the Ron Paul revolution has no influence on its actions so as to run the whole thing into the ground. I mean, the Occupy Wall Street protesters need to get wise as to who is steering them and what agenda they are serving because... Uh, pissing off Ron Paul supporters, this sizable and hugely energetic grassroots movement that's, you know, shaken the core of the establishment for longer than most of these OWS protesters have been out of high school, is an in incredibly stupid and naive thing to do. So OWS protesters really need to get wise and need to wake up to whose agenda they are serving.